for what I say. Praise the Lord. Words are powerful. Words can kill. And words can make a lie. There are things you can say to a person and the person will commit suicide. Amen? Amen. And there are things you say to a man who is, who is down there, discouraged and ready to die. When you say those words to him, you lift him up. So words are very powerful. So I'm very careful with the things I say, whether jokingly or seriously, I'm careful with what I say. Because when I hear things around me, whether you are joking and it's sounding negative, I don't like it. Praise the Lord. So I want you to be very, very um, serious this morning and be willing to hear. And then two, I, we've said this before, but I want to bring it now to your notice again. Your seriousness in the house of God is seen by how ready you are. And the way you are ready, we can see it in the things that you have with you. You come to church, you don't have anything to write. That tells me you're not... Even God knows that you're not really serious. God knows. And so there are things he will not give to you because you will not value it. Why do you think we have the scriptures? It was written. Amen? These are the words of God that was written. And today we are reading it. If it was not written, you wouldn't have it with you. And how can you come to church without a writing material? What if God speaks a word to you? And what will you do? You just put it in your head? See, your brain is too small to retain information. Whenever you gather like this, wherever, and you hear the word, by the time you leave the door, you you've lost like 50% of what you've heard. If you continue on doing the day before you do it, you've lost another 25%. Amen. By the next day, 100% is gone. You don't even remember what you heard in church anymore. So your sign of seriousness to God is your willingness to write. You know what? Habakkuk chapter 2. Let me show you to us in scriptures. Habakkuk chapter 2. Let me, I want to read it so... I will not just be quoting it, but I want us to be serious. You know, if we show that seriousness to God, God will be serious with us. Amen? How about chapter 2, verse 1? From verse 1. He said, I will climb up to my watch tower and stand. <laughs> I will stand upon my watch. <laughs> Praise God. In James Russia. And set me upon the tower and watch to see what he will say unto me. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. And then what did God say? And the Lord answered me and said, Do what? Write Do what? Write and this is God instructing the prophet to write. He said, Write the vision. Make it plain upon tables. Many of you are discouraged because what God has told you before, or the vision you had before, you don't have it written down. You know, whenever you are discouraged, you go back to what you wrote before and read it. You get encouraged. 
But many people don't go back to think because you didn't write anything down, so you can't go back to anything to read and get encouraged. It's important to write. God said, write the vision. If you don't have any book with you, you have smartphones. The other day I was talking with the sister, and she brought out her phone. Do you know your phone have notes? Do you know that? Yeah. She brought out her phone, and then on her notes, she wrote. She, she practically wrote everything I was saying. And then she was reading it for me. I was like, wow. Praise the Lord. So you don't have any excuse. If you don't have people in Bible, you have a phone. I'm not saying you should start chatting. Don't do that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Go to the notes. Put down stuff that you can refer back to when you get back home. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And after that, we still have our YouTube channel. Go back there. Listen to the message. And I'll come back to it. So, right. Amen? Amen. And then two... Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 1. I just want our hearts to be ready. I have some things to say this morning and trust God for it. Say, keep thy foot when you go to the house of God and be more ready to what? Yeah. To hear than to what? For they consider not that they do evil. Now, when you go to the house of God, be more ready to what? Yeah. So don't get distracted. Don't let your neighbor distract you. Be ready to hear because it is in the hearing that you receive. The Bible says God sent his word and his word healed them and delivered them from destruction. So when you hear, Jesus said, it shall come to pass that those who die, they will hear the voice of the Son of Man. And as many that are dead will rise. And those who are alive when they hear, they will never die. Praise the Lord. To be ready to hear today, and I believe God will speak to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, so let's go to the message of today. I've already started, I'm just bit some pieces already from the message. So let's go. My topic this morning is um, can we have it? Glory to God. I, 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 I talked about it last week briefly, so I want to go in depth today. Can we say it together? Let me tell you about believe again. Believe. Tell him, I know you are discouraged. I know, I know you, you tried before. I know you tried before. And maybe nothing happened. Maybe nothing happened. But, but I want you to believe again. I want you to believe again. Hallelujah. Amen. Believe again. Hallelujah. Amen. The problem we have in the church today is we have so many believers who are unbelievers. Amen? We call ourselves believers, but we are unbelievers. And it shows in the way we talk. It shows in the way we carry ourselves. Because we don't truly believe. We profess that we believe, but deep down in our heart, we really don't have it. And... Uh, there's little God can do for a man who has no faith. It is unnatural to disbelieve. And may I say this to you, that one sign of a sick spirit is unbelief. It's an indication that your spirit is, is sick. Faith is a natural thing. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, say God has given to every man the measure of faith. The measure. He has given to every man the measure of faith. So as you come into this world, naturally you have faith. Now the question is, on what is your faith anchored on? Some have faith in things. Some have faith in some other gods. Some have faith, but it's still faith all the same because it is embedded in the soul of man. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's unnatural to disbelieve. Very unnatural. Christianity is not a religion. We have so many religions in the world, but Christianity is not one of them. Amen? Amen. Religion is man's attempt to reach to God. And doing things in form of good works just to please God, to get the attention of God. But anything, any good work done outside of Christ is not acceptable to God. Because man in his own ability, in his own strength, can never attain to God's standard. Hello? 
can never attain to God's standard. Mm. So as long as man is acting and living and functioning outside the confines of Christ, every activity he's doing is futility. It's an effort in futility. He said, all our self-righteousness, they are like filthy rags before him. And so what enables us to be accepted by God is our coming into Christ. And so he said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are what? Passed away and all things have become new. And so once you are in Christ Jesus, every action and every good deed and every activity is accepted by God because it is under the administration of Christ. So when you see a man out there who is not connected to God or to Christ and is living right and doing everything, it's, it's okay, it's good. And walking in so-called integrity is fine. But that doesn't make him qualify for the salvation of heaven. God is so perfect that you cannot please him in everything. I've listened to some people that are perfectionists before. I mean natural people. There's nothing you do that will please them. You, 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 they are not doing this right until they do it themselves. That's a mortal man. What about God? God's standard is so high. We can't attain it. And God knows. Any little dance like this is displeasing to God. God is very detailed. Nothing is too big or too small before God. The Bible says even the hair of your hair is numbered. God knows the number of the strand of your hair. Now, how many strands of hair do you have on your head? <laughs> For some of us, gravity has gotten to some of us. So it has gone the way of the head. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And God knows the number that I'm missing. <laughs> Amen to Jesus. But you see, he knows and is very detailed. Now you can see your physical hair, the strand of your hair. Do you know how many cells make up that one strand of hair? And yet God knows every cell of your hair. That's how detailed God is. And that's what tell you any little error is not acceptable before God. A man cannot but do error. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And that is why he made a provision in Christ Jesus. So what God is looking at is not just looking at you because on your own ability you can do nothing. I mean, by strength and love and prevail. But when you come under the administration of Christ, God looks at you through the eyes of his son. And that is why everything God is doing is to bring out the image of his son in you. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 29, he said, to whom he did foreknow, there be also the predestinate to be conformed to the image of his dear son. So he wanted every one of us to rise to the level and the fullness of the stature of the son of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Paul was speaking in Galatians chapter 3 and chapter 2 he said, he said, oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? That you turn your back to the gospel that I've received before. He said, my little children of whom I travail in birth until Christ be formed in you. So the goal of Christianity is Christ's likeness. God didn't save you for you to live your life. He didn't save me for me to live my life. He saved you and I for us to live his life. Because Jesus took our place. The Bible says he became sin. Who knew no sin? That we might become the righteousness of God. So he took our place and we took his place. Hello? So if he took our place and took our punishment and took the, 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 the punishment that was due to us, he expects us to live his life. So that he died for us that they who live should no longer live unto themselves. But they should live unto him that died and rose again. You are bought with a price. Tell me you are not your own. Say so you belong to someone. You were bought with the price. You belong to Christ. Hallelujah. You belong to Christ. So you are not meant to live your own life. 
It's good to have your own agenda and have your own ambition, but all of those agenda and ambition must come under the government of Christ. If it doesn't come under the government of Christ, then everything you do is a waste of time. So when a man is bragging on the things and the achievement he has in life, those things, they, are, they can only move men in this realm. But you see, this realm is passing away. It will be destroyed eventually. What gives you credibility before spirits are the submissions that you made to God and the alignment that you have with the Almighty God. That's what gives you credibility. And so God was speaking in Jeremiah chapter 9. He said, don't let the wise man glory in his wisdom. Don't let the rich man glory in his riches or the great man in his strength. So, but if you are going to glory, glory in this that you know me and you understand me. Jeremiah 9 verse 23. He said, let not the wise man glory in his, in his wisdom. Don't glory in your ability. If you are going to glory, glory that you know me. Because the knowledge of God that you have, the experience of God that you have is what makes you. That is what God looks at. That is what spirits look at, looks at. And that's what the devil respects. Amen? Mm. My God. My God, my God. Say, so let, not, let, not, let him that glory, glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercised loving kindness and judgment and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, say the Lord. So you are not important in the spirits by the things that you have acquired in life. They are good, but that's not what, well, that don't, that's not what makes you relevant in the spirit. What makes you relevant in the spirit is your alignment with God. And that is why the gospel we've had before now, I, 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 you know, I like repeating this word because I know it takes time for things to really sink into people. You need to hear some things like over and over and over again before it start making sense. Amen? For too long, we have listened to the gospel only of prosperity, which is good. Amen? The church of God must prosper. We all need money. We need to eat. Praise God. We need to look good. And God is aware. Tell you what God is aware. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He's aware. You need to look good. Amen? But you see, looking good and eating well is not the gospel. <laughs> And because we are seeking for things we are going to eat and what we are going to wear, that is why we are easily deceived by devils. Because those are the things the enemy gives to you to draw you to himself. It means you can easily be bought. Hallelujah. Amen. Imagine somebody who... <laughs> Jesus is Lord. Uh, you know, there are some Especially back home, back in Nigeria. I don't know if it happens here, maybe it does, I don't know, but back in Nigeria and back in our near some countries, you know, we have a lot of young girls who are dating politicians and um, lots of big shots, and they call them sugar daddies. <laughs> if I won't even told me one time, the man was calling her while I was talking with her, and then she told me that man is my ATM. <laughs> Meaning she gets the man give her money all the time. And then she will say, God is blessing her. <laughs> Amen. Ah, yeah. God has blessed me. He has given me a man. He takes care of me. Meanwhile, this man is married. <laughs> Will come in to give testimony in church. Oh, I just got a new car. Uh, they just opened a shop for me. Who opened the shop? <laughs> Was it God? Come on. Amen to Jesus. You know why? Because the gospel they have had so far is about prosperity. They think if you are doing well, it means God is blessing you. No, sir. No. That you're having money and doesn't mean God is the one blessing you. No. 
God is not going to bless you to fulfill your own appetite. Everything God does is for his own purpose and will. He says, seek ye first the kingdom and all these things will be added. Now, these things are meant to serve the purpose of God's kingdom. If they are not serving God's kingdom purpose, then a purpose of God's kingdom, then it didn't come from God. It wasn't God that gave it to you. <laughs> oh my God. Amen. Please don't get confused here. God means well for you. We read the scriptures and we realize that the men of all that God used, God blessed them. The Bible says Abraham was very rich in silver, in gold, and in cattle. But Abraham was fulfilling the purpose of God. Solomon was very rich. The Bible says in the days of Solomon, gold is like dust. It was too common. They eat with gold spoon and gold plates. In the days of Solomon, Gold was, according to the Nigerians, Yapa and Yapa. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Everywhere. It was nothing. But it was God that gave it to him. Just to let you know that God gives. But what he's looking for really is not, what he's looking for is your heart connection. Is your heart with him. <laughs> oh, Jesus is Lord. You know, some people, Right now, they are not creative. They cannot think straight. They cannot think and reason and do things. But once money enters their hand, suddenly they start getting creative. Their creative mind just come alive. And then they realize, wait a minute, that car I've been thinking of, I think it's time to learn buy that car. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, that trip I was, I've been dreaming of making, I think it's time to make that trip. Thinking that the the finance that God gave to you is for your own appetite. No. God gave you so that you can fulfill his agenda on earth. That is why you must first and foremost submit to God. Once you are completely submitted to God, then everything you have is submitted to him also. Then you can make demands. Amen? Amen. Whatever God takes from you, is because he wants to multiply it. Yes, Praise the Lord. So he can make demands from you. And if you, are, if you obey that demand, he will take you to another level. Because he can trust you. Hallelujah. Amen. So Christianity is not religion. It's actually a life that is connected to God. Or better still, it's, it's divinity expressed through humanity. That's what Christianity is. The life of God expressed in the world of flesh. And as you connect with God, his life will start to find expression through you. Praise the Lord, somebody. All right. Now, I said all that just to get ourselves our hearts set. My message is actually to, for you to believe again. Because there are so many unbelievers in the house of God. We, we've we heard and we claim that we believe in healing. But in reality, we don't really believe it. We believe God can heal. We believe that. But we don't really believe he can heal us personally. We believe God can save. But we don't really believe he can save us personally. There was a time we believed, and because it didn't happen in court, we got discouraged. Maybe because at that time your heart is not, it's not okay. Maybe your heart was to, you want God to bless you so that you can equally show to your neighbor that I have arrived also. God has also done it for me. You want to brag to your neighbor. Do you know that most people, whenever they pray, oh God, Bless me that my enemies can be ashamed. The enemies are talking about is not the <laughs> The enemy is probably one neighbor somewhere. And maybe that neighbor too is trusting God for something. And you want God to bless you so that that neighbor can be ashamed. God will do it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, if our heart is not right, it will be difficult for God to do things because he knows if he gives it to you, you will destroy yourself and those around you. And God doesn't want that. And so he will delay things. And that is why before prayer changes your environment, it will change you first. So if you are not changed, then your environment will not change. You have to change. For things to change for you, you have to change. And so prayer will change you. And once you are changed and your heart is right, things around you will start to work. And the earlier you align, the better. Don't delay, otherwise 
One problem can take years before it, before, it, before it gets answered. But if you align on time, then it will come faster. That's the secret. Jesus said, after all these things do the Gentiles seek. He said, but. But what? Seek ye first. Talk to me. But what? Seek ye first. Seek ye first. First, the kingdom. He said, then this thing shall be what? So the fastest way to get things from God is to seek his kingdom. That's the fastest way. Let your intention and your heart be for the glory of God. That's what God wants. Amen. Amen. I know God is lifting up somebody here today. Amen. And I know God is setting you up for something great. Just connect with him. Amen. Amen. And you will see those things that you are seeking for. They will come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Bible says in Proverbs in Psalm 34 verse 5 or 37 verse 4. Check it out for me. He said, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you. There is nothing too hard for God to do. He said in Psalm 84 and verse 11, he said, the Lord is a son and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. No good thing. No good thing. God wants good for you. Hello, somebody. And believe me, I, I must let you know this. Whatever you're asking God for is still too small. Amen? The Bible says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask of him. You're trusting God for one car. God is ready to give you five. He's ready, I'm telling you. But then, the goal is not for you to have the car. The goal is for you to be connected to him first. Then these other things will come. Because God is blessing you so you can be a blessing to others. Not just for yourself alone. But can God trust you with that? Can he trust you with it? That's the question. Praise the Lord. So God has no problem blessing you and giving you things you're looking for. He has no problem at all. But the problem is, is your heart right? That is what you must work out and watch out for. Hallelujah. Alright, I want to give some points here in terms of believing again. Number one, you must understand that faith is a fight. Faith is what? Faith is a fight. Faith is a fight. Hallelujah. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, uh, uh, that should be verse 9 or so. He said, check it out for me. He said, fight the good fight of what? Fight the what? Fight the good fight of faith. Faith is a fact. You must accept that fact. That faith is a fight. You have to fight for that faith. Amen? Amen. Things will come to challenge you, but you must stand your ground. Now, this is actually a basic message because many believers have gone, they are trying to climb when they've not established the foundation. The Bible says if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And the foundation of Christianity is actually faith. That's the foundation. So if the foundation is destroyed, then how high can you go? You are trying to build an edifice, a building, and the foundation is faulty. How high can you go? Because the strength of the building is the foundation. It doesn't matter how beautiful the building is. If the foundation is faulty, that building is coming down. Hallelujah. Amen. So we have to take care of the foundation. And faith is the foundation of Christianity. The just shall live by faith. And so faith is a fight. Fight the good fight of faith. He said, lay hold of eternal life. There unto thou hath also attained. Fight the fight and lay hold. You have to lay hold on it. It's trying to slip from your hand, but you lay hold on it. God has promised healing because healing is already bought for. It's already paid for. Are you hearing me? The reason we can claim healing is because it was already paid for. Salvation is free, but it was not cheap. Somebody paid for it. 
So the fact that he paid for salvation, he also paid for your healing and deliverance. It was paid for in Christ. So we can claim it, but you have to lay hold on it. That you are working with God does not mean challenges will not come. It will come. Hello? A man born of a woman is of few days and full of troubles. It comes. Because we live in a world that is regulated by evil powers. We live in a world that is regulated by the God of the system of the world. And this world, like I told us before, always encourages and supports evil. Naturally. This world supports evil. So if you want to do something good, you have to fight for it. That's why it is easier to destroy than to build. Because the world supports evil. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. So, you fight the good fight of faith, you lay hold of eternal life. Lay hold on what God has already given in his world. Health, prosperity, name them. They are all available in Christ. But you have to lay hold on them. Refuse to be discouraged. So one faith to fight. Number two. Still laying a foundation here. I already told us that the just can lead by faith. You can find that in Romans 1 verse 17. And the just shall live by faith. Romans 1 17 please. The just shall live by what? So that means without faith the just cannot survive. Hello? Without faith, the just are not what? He said, Hearing the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall do what? Live by faith. And then, number three, faith is that quality that overcomes the world. Faith is that quality that overcomes the world. According to 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. He said, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory. Even what? Hello? Even our faith. So faith is what overcomes the world. Because the challenges will come. Praise the Lord. And then number four, God has a passion to be believed. These are just facts I'm laying down. God has a passion to be believed. God wants to be believed. And that's why he said the just shall live by faith. And he said in Hebrews 11 and verse 6, he said, he that come to God, first he said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must do what? Believe. Believe that what? He is. He is. And that he is what? He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God wants to be believed. We have so many stories in scripture that show us the fact that God loves it when people believe in him. And when Jesus came around, he told us, look, all things are possible to him that believe. We remember the story of the three young men, the three Hebrew boys. We all know their story. They are very popular in this church. And what's their name? Shedra, Meshach. Where is Meshach and Shedra? They are somewhere. Amen to Jesus. Now, he said that these three guys in Babylon at that time were serving God, doing their thing, and then King Nebuchadnezzar erected an image of himself. And then he told everybody to bow to that image. That guy was crazy. Amen. No, they said, they said power corrupt and <laughs> absolute power corrupt, absolutely. The guy was more like the king of kings on the earth. Lots of people were under his, his dominion. And then he made an image on his birthday. So everybody okay, began to worship this image. Praise God. And these three young men, Hebrews, in the province of Babylon, they said, this is impossible. can't. We can't do it. Amen? Because it is written, that shall not bow down to any graven image. And they stood there. The king didn't know. But some folks were actually jealous of these guys because how they came into power was so mysterious. That's the story for another day. They went to report to the king that, hey, hey, king, hey wait a minute. We have these three guys in your province who they are defying your order. They refuse to bow to the image that they have set up. 
And the king called them, said, Come forth, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He said, Is it true that you are not bowing down to the image that I have set up in my power and majesty? He said, If you don't bow, the furnace of fire is there. You are going to burn there. And then the three young men said, O king, praise the Lord. You know, I like quoting them because those, that word they don't used to step me up and motivate me. He said, Oh, King, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. He said, We are not careful to answer you in this, this matter. In any other matter, we might, we might be diplomatic. We might plead and then, you know, crave your indulgence. But in this world, <laughs> we are not careful to answer you. He said, Be known unto you, O King. They stressed it. O King, we will not bow. God is able to deliver us from your head and from the fire. The Bible says, He said, But if not, be it known unto thee, O King, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. We will not bow. Sometimes standing for righteousness can put you into trouble. Yes. Amen? Amen. But you see, each time you allow yourself to enter trouble because you stand for righteousness, you are gaining rank in the spirit. Yes. In the world, you may look foolish, but in the spirit, you are being recognized. You are gaining authority. That is what counts. Amen? And they went for that. Then there was the other full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore, he spake and commanded that they should be they should hit the furnace one seven times more than it was to be heated. And then, because the guy wanted them to, once they entered the fire, it becomes silver. Amen. They become meat for Shalom. And he commanded most of the mighty men that were in the army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the fire. And the Bible told us that they did so. And the heat killed those men as they were approaching the fire. But you see, while they were going through all those hassles and all those harassment, God didn't do anything. But these men stood their ground. They were ready to die. Can you die for what you believe? Amen. Whatever you're not ready to die for will die in your hand. Amen. Amen. Are you ready to die for what you believe? Hear me? If you are willing to wait for God forever, you will not be waiting for too long. Amen. Amen. Once you come to that point, you make up your mind, no matter how long it takes, I must wait for God, He will do it for me. Once you come to that point, you will not be waiting for too long because your mind is already made up. And that's all God wants. Because God can never deny or disappoint a man that puts his trust in him. And these men, they kept on. And then they threw them into the fire. It was when they entered the fire that God showed up. So God may not be early, but he's never late. Anytime he shows up is the right time. Praise the Lord somebody. But you see, all of this is 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 motivated under the economy of faith, believing God. God has a passion to be believed. If you see any man that believes in Him, He will show up for that man. Hallelujah. We remember the story of Jesus. Another story again. We all know there was a woman, a Syrophoenician woman, who had a daughter that was vexed and disturbed by the devil, and she has heard of Jesus, although she was not a Jew. Jesus was only sent to the Jews. And, uh, but the fame of him has pro spread abroad. Everybody around knew that there's a man called Jesus and he's a miracle worker. And so this woman heard that this man Jesus did all this stuff and she had a daughter that was vexed of the devil. And then she managed and found her way to where Jesus was. And when she saw Jesus, she came and said, Master, please have mercy on me, my daughter. She's having devils disturbing her. Please come and heal her. The Bible says Jesus did not listen to her. He kept on walking. But this woman kept on falling and begging and begging. And then the disciples now got tired. They said, Master, tell this woman to go back. 
And Jesus now turned to the disciples and said, Look, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of Israel. It is not proper to give the children's bread and cast it to dogs. That was what Jesus said. And the woman said, It's true, I know. But even the dogs also, they eat the crumbs that fall from the children's table. <laughs> oh my God. And the Bible said, When Jesus heard it, he said, Woman, your faith is great. He said, For that saying, go, your daughter is healed. And that was how the daughter got healed. Why? Because of the faith of the woman. God has a passion to be believed. So you must believe again. Hallelujah. Amen. You must do what? Believe you need to believe again. Praise God. Amen. So God has a passion to be believed. And then, God wants, he said, who has believed our report? He asked a question. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 1. He said, Lord, who has believed our report? And unto whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Who has believed our report? The devil knows that if you can walk in faith, he has lost his grip over you. Even the devil told us, he said, he said, above all, taking the shield of faith. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will quench every fiery dart of the wicked. So when the enemy throws things at you, you use your faith to quench it. Above all, taking the shield of faith. So the enemy knows that your faith is potent and powerful. And so he wants to leak and he wants you to lose your faith. That is why you must believe again. Hallelujah. Yeah. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Thank you. Bear with you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. All the arrows that the enemy is shooting at you. The enemy shoots an arrow of deception at you or shoot an arrow of pain into your body. You use faith to quench it. You tell yourself, I am healed. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, let the weak say, I am strong. Because if you don't do that, <laughs> ah, the enemy will have a field day in your life. And so we have a situation in the book of Luke chapter 21. Please look for it for me. Everything just keep coming to my mind now. He said, Peter called, or Jesus called Peter and said, Simon, Simon. Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you like wheat. Say, but I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. Because it is your faith you need to overcome all the onslaught and the attack of the wicked. They will come. You don't have to pray for them. They come naturally. The Bible said the devil will get to and fro. Seeking whom he may devour. He said, but I have got, got to the previous verse, verse, verse 30. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desire to have you. And I want you to know, whether you do it or not, Satan has desire to have you. Whether you know it or not. He said, to have you that he may sift you like wheat. Oh my God. You know how they sift something? <laughs> they, you have to shake it. So he will use situation to shake you. Hunger may come sometimes. Disappointment they come sometimes. Amen. Yeah. Friends will rise up against you sometimes. Yeah. People will concoct things against you. All to shake you, to sift you so that your faith. Yeah. Because the object is for your faith. Yeah. Not to be intact. He said, but I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. Yeah. And when that has converted, strengthen your breath. Yeah. Because every test. What you need to overcome every test and trial is your faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So instead of, instead of coming down and getting discouraged, strengthen yourself again. The Bible says if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Adversity comes to all men. 
Amen. Amen. But you must understand that tough times never last. Oh, yes. But tough people do. Yes. And what gives you that toughness is your faith. That your faith does not fail. And when you are converted, so the enemy is after your faith. Tell, tell me about Satan is after your faith. Amen. Amen. That long time condition that is holding you down is because the enemy is after your faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if you know the power that is available to you, that God has made available to you, you will not give up too easy. If you know the power that God has made available for you and I, we will not give up too easy because of the trials that we go through. For a righteous man, things must work. A righteous man may fall seven times, but he will rise again. There's a promise of rising and bouncing back for a righteous man. That is the hope and the assurance and the confidence that we have because the God we serve is alive. He's the God of all flesh. It doesn't matter how far you've gone, He can bring you back. But the question is can you trust Him? Can you believe Him? If you know the power that is available to you, you will not give up to His. <laughs> In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17, let's read that portion. We quote it a lot. 18 and 19 rather. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. Just to give us a little you know, say that the eyes of your understanding be what? Enlightened. Can you get me amplified version? Let's see if I can go amplify this morning. He said, and, and I pray that the eyes of your heart, the very center and the core of your being may be enlightened, flooded with light by the Holy Spirit so that you will know and cherish the hope, the divine guarantee, the confident expectation to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, that's God's chosen people, verse 19. Also, and so that you will begin to know what the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his, of his active spiritual power is in us who believe say these are in accordance with the working of his mighty strength which he produced in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places but that is the power that is available to you the same power that rose Christ from the dead and he told us in Romans 8 he said the spirit of him that raise of Christ of the dead dwell in you. That same spirit shall quicken and give life to your mortal body. You must understand that the power of God is available to you. Praise the Lord. The power of God is what? It's available to you. And that power is able to break every stronghold. That power is able to destroy every grip of the enemy. And that power is able to change everything around you. It doesn't matter how twisted and clumsy the situation may look like, it is not beyond God. With God, all things are possible. Hallelujah. Which he produced. We don't have enough time. And I'm giving you a little drama that happened in the region of Hades when Jesus went there. The Bible told us on the cross, my goodness, you see, when Jesus born on the cross, I know we look at him and then we pity him and then we pray, God. But he wasn't looking like an object of pity. Amen? Amen. He was not looking like an object of pity. Although he had wounds all over, he still carried himself with dignity. Because he knew he was carrying the weight of the world. That was why he encountered that power in the garden. Bible says he prayed earnestly that the, the droplet of, of sweat from his face was like droplets of blood. So much power. And by the time he was done praying, Bible told us they came to look for him in John chapter 20, 21. And then they asked him, he asked them, Who are you looking for? They said, We're well, looking for Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I am he. As soon as he said, I am he, the power of God came on them. They all of them went to the ground. He was so 
My goodness. Loaded with power. And the Bible says one of the disciples took a sword and cut off the ear of one of the men that came to arrest Jesus. Jesus took the ear and put the ear last. There was too much power. Although they were whipping him and beating him, he was enduring the pain. But the power was still there. And while he was on the cross, the devil thought, all right, now we have gotten him. He's going to die. Or maybe at this time, he might even speak something and blaspheme against God. But while he was there, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It, you don't say that naturally. Amen. You don't say that naturally. There must be something on you. It was the same thing in, in, in the life of Stephen. They were stoning this guy. The Bible said they looked at his face, and his face looked like an angel. The glory of God was radiating from him. He was so full of the power of the Holy Ghost. And they looked at him and said his face was like an angel. And the way he talked, the words coming from his mouth was cutting them to the heart. They couldn't hear it. They got angry, threw him out, and they stoned him. And while they were stoning him, Stephen lifted up his eyes and said, like, Behold, Jesus standing on the glory at the right hand of the Father. And then he said, Lord Jesus, forgive them. He could still say that by they are stoning him. If he was in his right mind, he would not have said so. Praise the Lord. But the guy was under the influence of the power of God. And so when Jesus hung on the cross, the power was there. When he said it is finished, he meant it. And when he went to Hades, he went to the region of the dark. And the reason the enemy can go out of Hades back and forth is because he has not been judged yet. So he can go to hell and torment people and still come out. His own time is coming. Praise the Lord. Amen. So when he got there, they saw him. They said, you are finished. And he told them, I am the king of kings. Amen. When he got there, he said, lift up your head, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up your everlasting God. And let the king of glory come in. Then he asked him, who is this king of glory? He said, he is the Lord strong, the Lord mighty in battle. Hallelujah. He said, he said, lift up your head on your gates and big and lift up your everlasting Lord and let the king of glory come in. He said, who is the king of glory? He said, the Lord strong, the Lord mighty in battle. He is the king of glory. And the Bible told us why he was there. He said, he spoiled principalities and powers. He gathered all of them together and then he, he, he derobed them. He took away their authority, took away their rope, took away their power and rendered them naked. And then when he rose back from the dead, Jesus went to preach to the dead, you know, in Hades. He went to preach to them. He went to hell to preach to them. And as many as believed him, the Bible says, when he rose from the dead, he rose with them. He said, and the Bible was in Matthew chapter 24 or 28. Jesus rose from the dead, and then the Bible says that the men that were also dead, all saints, also rose from the grave with Jesus. He went to deliver them from hell. Nobody has ever left hell before. But Jesus nullified the powers and rendered them useless. And then he delivered them and brought them out. Now, it was the same power that we're talking about. God said that same power that rose Christ from the dead is the same power that is in you. The same power that is available to you. So if you know the power that is available to you, you will not give up to this. You will not allow the enemy to have the final say in your life. You will not say, Satan, enough. It's enough. I cannot take this anymore. You have done so much now. Today is the end. And believe me, the day you come to the point and you tell yourself enough is enough, that day your change will come. See, until there's a revolting on your inside and you can't have a revolution on the outside, you must revolt with it and tell yourself, I am what God says I am. I cannot continue in this state anymore. God did not save you so you can become a beggarly element. God saved you so that you can, you can showcase his power and his majesty to the world. He said, let your light so shine before them. Hallelujah. But you see, the problem is, the enemy is trying to keep every man in darkness, in ignorance. Because ignorance is another form of darkness. And the Bible told us darkness shall cover the earth and cross darkness to people. 
He doesn't want you to know that you are no longer under his authority. Hey, hear me. Colossians 1 and verse 12 told us, God has delivered us from the powers of darkness. He has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. We are no longer under the authority of the enemy. We have been translated. Therefore, I am translated. translated. Say it again. I am translated. I am am no longer under the authority of darkness. Hallelujah. You see, we have been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Now, this is where you are. This is your position as a child of God. So don't allow the enemy to have a field day in your life. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Don't allow him. Our greatest problem is ignorance. What's our greatest problem? Amen to Jesus. Amen. So faith is that quality you need to live a victorious life. The challenges that come your way requires faith to overcome them. And so you need to work on your faith. Amen? Do what? Do what? Now, let's see some practices that produce faith in our hearts. Some covenant practices that produce faith in us. Because faith can be produced. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. Number one, you must constantly do what I call selective hearing. Selective what? That means you must select what you listen to. Why? Because faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by what? Hearing. What you hear all the time will produce faith in you. Whether in the positive or in the negative. So you need to select what you listen to. You can develop faith for anything. Hello, somebody. You can develop faith for finances. You can develop faith for healing. You can develop faith for living a victorious life. All you need to do is to select what you listen to. If you want to walk in health, then listen to words that talk about health all the time. Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by what? Faith comes by what? So my question to you is this. What are you listening to? What do you allow? What do you give your attention to? What kind of words do you listen to? Do you listen to every news that flies around in the environment? There are some news when you hear them, it's just... Story. If you're here before, you just bring it down. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Selective hearing. So I, 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 I hate it when people talk negative around me. Not because I'm not listening to me. There's difference between facts and truths. Facts are subject to change. But truth is eternal. Truth is eternal. And the Bible says there's nothing we can do against the truth but for the truth. There's nothing we can do against the truth but for the truth. Meaning the truth can never die. And God's word is the truth. So if the word of God has made me the head and not the tail, then I refuse to allow myself to be the tail. I may look like I am the tail, but I am not the tail. Because the word of God says I'm not. Let all men be a lie. Let all situations be a lie. But let God alone be true. I rather hold on to what God has said. Because as long as you hold on to what God has said or said, eventually you will see the manifestation in your life. That's how we know we can rise. Why? Because that's our place. We can face tomorrow because he lives. Jesus said, because I live, you will live also. So if he's alive, I cannot die. Hello, somebody. I shall not die, but live to declare the works of God. So when the enemy is coming to whisper death in me, as I said, listen to me, I cannot die. My life is hidden in Christ, in God. I will only live when he said, it's time for me to go. Hallelujah. But he has not said so. So I'm not going anywhere. Amen to Jesus. Now you need to understand what God has said. The truth of God's word never lies. It never dies. But who do you believe? So 
and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Selective hearing. Listen to words of faith that build faith in you. Not words that bring you down. Don't follow the multitude. Oh, it's happening there. Everybody's saying that everybody is saying it doesn't mean it is right. Hello? It doesn't mean it is right. The word of God alone is true. Stand on that word. You can stand and that word has a very firm foundation and you can never go on that when you stand upon the word of God. Praise the Lord. Mm. I told us the other day about a man who was possessed and a group of believers were trying to cast out the devils on the man. And they were shouting, come out, come out, come out, come out. And the devil was manifesting, manifesting. And he was actually very stubborn. And then he about four brothers I was not asking them, you, what do you stand on? Where are you standing? And that one looked at himself, so I'm standing on my feet. And the devil gave him a slap. <laughs> <laughs> Second one, you, where are you standing? <laughs> and that one said, I'm standing right here. And he slapped him. When he got to the fourth man, he asked him, what are you standing on? This is the devil asking someone. The guy said, I'm standing on the word of God. That says, in the name of Jesus, I will cast out devils. And so in the name of Jesus, come out of him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Standing on the word of God is a firm foundation. You cannot fall. Because God won't allow his word to go on through you. It is easier for heaven and earth to pass it than for the word of God to go on through so if you are standing on that word, you are standing on the firm foundation. Yeah. Though the world turns upside down, or in, even inside out, you stand on God's word. But you must allow that faith to be built in you by listening to the words of God that talks about the issue that you are looking for. Do you know that there are scriptures that talk about your healing, your health, your deliverance, your so everything is there in the word of God. You have to search it out. Every child of God's meant to be reading every day. When was the last time you deliberately, purposefully read the scriptures? Because you are seeking for something. This should be your covenant practice as a child of God. Don't allow the wind that is blowing in the you know, around to blow your mind and distract you from God. Don't allow it. Because whatever can take you away from God is going to kill you. Whatever can take you away from God will kill you. The enemy is doing everything he can to make sure he brings you down. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen, in case you don't know. Everyone can be a victim of, I told you before, of a programming in the atmosphere. <laughs> Man, as an entity, is vulnerable and open to external influence, spiritual influence. Every man is open to spiritual influence. If you are not guarded as a child of God and you are in the spirit, you will be easily deceived. And deception, my goodness, come in such a way that you will not know that you are already in deception. You will have gone very far before you realize that, hey, I'm doing this wrong. Because there's a way that cement in right unto a man, but the end is destruction. And so the enemy knows that man is vulnerable. He knows that man is open to external spiritual influence. And so he used that medium to try to seduce man. And the Bible says in the last days, seducing spirits are come. And we have them today. They seduce people, lure them into things deceptively, just to put them in bondage. The enemy is doing all that. But a man that knows the word, that knows the truth of God's word, will not submit to the lie of the devil. You see, if you are used to the original, when the fake come, you will know. Amen? Amen? If you are used to the original, when faith comes, you will know. God is the original. God's word is the original. So if you are used to God's word and the originality of God, when the enemy comes with deception, you will know. God is light. In him, there's no darkness at all. But the Bible says the enemy has transformed himself into an angel of light. 
So if you are in the light, when the enemy comes, you can recognize him. Hallelujah. Yeah. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So listen to the right words at all times to build your faith. Amen to Jesus. Yeah. Then number two, speaking faith. Speaking faith-filled words. If you are casual with your words, I want you to know that spirits are not casual. Amen? In case you don't know, in case you don't know, you are in a warfare. And no man live like a civilian in the war front and expect to win the battle. If you live like a civilian in the war front, stray bullets can hit you. I know somebody. Stray bullets can do what? You must be conscious of the fact that you are in a warfare all the time. And ladies and gentlemen, you will keep fighting till you leave this world. There's no resting place here. Hello? Are we not going to the promised land? Huh? We are going to the promised land, isn't it? So when we get there, we will rest. So don't rest here now. Otherwise, we'll be in bondage. Praise the Lord. Christian, seek not yet repose. Hear the guardian angel say, Thou art in the midst of fools. Watch and pray. You are in the midst of fools. You don't have to feel it. God has told you, be aware that you are in the midst of fools. You are in the midst of fools. The enemy is all around. The reason you can't see them is because they are hiding. They don't want you to know they are there. That is why they are very deceptive. Because Satan will not come to you and tell you, guess what? I am Satan. He's not going to do that. Because he knows if he tells you that you won't follow him. Praise the Lord. He would rather use things to lure you. I shall not have time. He will use things to lure you. It is when you have gotten inside, he will just trap you. Have you seen a spider's web before? The spider web looks very beautiful. And harmless. And harmless. Praise the Lord. And then the poor fly will look at the thing and it seems beautiful. Let me go and. And the way the fly just gets, before you know it, it gets stuck. And it tries to move, it cannot move. Then the spider comes gallantly and just catch the, spider, the, the, the fly, twist, wrap it up with this, with this web, and then suck the life out of it. That's what the enemy does. He woo you with things. That is why we, every one of us, need to deal with our lust. Deal with the things that hold your attention because these are the things the enemy will use to put you in bondage. The enemy will not tempt you with something that you don't like. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. He won't tempt you with what you don't like. He will tempt you with what you love, what you like. Because he knows our appetite we will submit our appetite anytime. The appetite we have, the things we love. Once he presents them before us, he will be dangling them before us. When he came before Eve, Eve was looking at the fruit, although God said don't eat, but you know, curiosity kills the cat. And it's just the way of man to be very curious. The one thing he says you shouldn't touch is that, that same thing you want to explore. And you're like, what is it about this thing? <laughs> Amen. Then your mind will just, every now and then when you go in there, what is it about this thing? We're told of a story of a man who this man was fetish actually. Got married to a sister, a lady. And then when they got to the house, the man told this lady, you see, very big house, mansion. You know, I told the lady, this room, don't go there. This one, just this one, don't. Go in the other place, enjoy yourself and all that, but this one, don't touch it. And it is the word that says you don't talk. That was the word she kept thinking about. <laughs> you know, the thing about the mind of man is this. What you think about all the time 
eventually happens. That's the way man is. As a man thinking his heart. We all gravitate in the direction of our predominant thoughts. A man is what he thinks about all day long. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Keep thinking about it. Don't touch this one, then your mind goes there. That means. <laughs> now, if you understand this concept, you can equally use it. You can use it and manipulate people. If you want to put somebody in trouble, you just direct the person's mind to that thing. That thing, don't touch it. But you already know your heart. What you said it already draws his attention there. You start thinking about it. And the more you think about it, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, uh, that should be verse 13 or 16, it said, if they had been mindful of where they came out from, they would have had opportunity to go back. Whatever your mind is full of, we create an opportunity for it to manifest. Praise the Lord. Whatever your mind is full of, will create an opportunity for its manifestation. And the long story short, eat and eat, eat at the fruit, and then here we are today. Still eating the fruits. Amen to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But you need to speak faith-filled words all the time. Don't be casual with your words. Don't catch yourself saying negative things about you. Now listen. What is the name of God? What is the name of God? Praise the Lord. You see how, you see how confused we are. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God has many names, right? But you see, when you are played to bowls and said, My name is I am. That I am. I am. That I am. And do you know that whenever we speak, we always use God's name. I am. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. I am the head. I'm not the tail. So we are attaching God's name to our reality. I know somebody. So don't use, don't attach God's name to a negative reality. Let the weak say. Huh? Let me ask your neighbor, how are you? Ask your neighbor, how are you? Because of your response, whenever you use the word I am, what you're doing is you are owning what you're saying. You are owning it. I am. So the next time somebody asks you, how are you? What should you say? What should you say? You know, there are so many believers who believe that uh, they should say what they see. Say what you want to see. Say what? The Bible says, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, And the spirit of God moved. And then God said, Oh, look at the darkness. Is that what God said? No. What did God say? Let so the next time you go through things, what should you say? You should say what you want to see. You see and God said that like, and God saw the light that it was good. You know somebody. So how are you? Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. So if you are trying to feel blessed before you say I am blessed, we walk by faith. Christianity is all about faith. Without faith, we got nothing. Do you understand? That is the foundation, the basis of our Christianity, faith. So if you are saying, even if you are dying with sickness, I say I am healed in Jesus' name, you are not lying. You are declaring what God has said. And if you truly believe it, you will be healed. Amen. The scriptures 
scriptures cannot be broken. Do you understand? A man of God said something some time ago. He said he had a very ghastly accident. His head broke. And while he was gasping for breath, he kept on saying, I cannot die. I cannot die. I cannot die. He kept on saying it because that is what he has been saying over time. And when that incident happened, he kept on saying it and then it just passed on. He rushed him into the hospital. Eventually, he came back to life. Because he said, I cannot die. And let me say this to you. Do you know why Jesus was from the dead? Jesus said, the Son of Man will be killed and on the third day he will rise again. He kept on saying, I will rise again. I will rise again. I will rise again. He said it and then he rose again. Amen. Hallelujah. You have to keep saying what you want to see. Never mind what you are going through. Your words can change the situation around you. If you can say what you want to see. So each time you say, I am, you are owning it. And you are attaching God's name to it. I am. So don't catch yourself saying I'm broke. It means you are owning a broke lifestyle. You don't want that to happen to you. Praise the Lord. Come on, say I'm rich. I'm rich. Say I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. That be your confession every day. Amen. You see, they, 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 even scientifically, we we're told, scientifically now, we talked about the subconscious mind. Amen. Bring it down a bit. Bring it down. Again. The subconscious mind is what rules us every day. Yeah. We do things subconsciously. 90%, well, 98% of our activity every day is done subconsciously. Mm -hmm. We only use 2% consciously. Amen. And once you are doing this subconsciously, you are already on cruise mode. Yeah. But you see, that subconscious was developed from when you were when you were very young. Through the words that you keep listening to and through the things you see, everything is feeding your subconscious. There's something we we'll call osmosis. From a higher concentration to a lower concentration. And that's what happened. When there's a higher concentration of words in particular in your mind, in your conscious mind, by a means of some psychological osmosis, it filters into your subconscious. And once it enters your subconscious, it starts to control you. That's how habits are formed. You start mechanically, then it becomes automatic. Praise the Lord. Today we, we, ride, we drive automatic car. Now, when I first learned how to drive back home, I learned with manual. And while I was driving, learning how to drive, I was conscious of everything. Conscious of the brake, of the, of the gear, of the brake, of the steering. While you are driving, your hand is like, you know, like, <laughs> amen. Then after two weeks, you have been doing it over and over again. It has entered your subconscious. And then now you know how to drive. You step into the car. Put on the ignition and then you step on on, on, on you step on the accelerator and before you know you are just talking and your, your hand is just going like that and you're moving. because now you are doing subconsciously yes, yes. it's already inside of you that, that, that is how it is when you keep saying the right words over and over again it enters your subconscious mind and then it starts to control you you find yourself gravitating in that direction that is how we are wired so you can reprogram your mind if your mind has been negative all your life, you can reprogram it by speaking and listening to positive words all the time, namely God's word. Amen? That's how you reprogram your mind. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, be it transformed by the renewing so your mind can be renewed. Hello, somebody. Tell them to renew your mind. Tell me, they say, renew your, renew your mind. So your mind can be renewed. Yes. So if you find yourself saying negative words and always thinking and always worried, that's an indication of a wrong mindset. That's true. A child of God that has the right mindset can never worry. Why should you worry? Praise the Lord. I told you before that some people, they love, they, they love it. They love to worry. Because it makes them feel like they are human beings. Because human beings are supposed to worry. 
If you are not worried, you'll be wondering, why are you not so? You should be worried. <laughs> Praise the Lord. No. Yeah. No. It's against our nature. If any man be in Christ, yes. see, this new nature we have does not worry. Why would you worry? You have God on your side. Do you believe God can do all things? Yes. Mm. Do you believe God can do all things? Yes. Let me ask you one more time. Do you believe God can do all things? Yes, sir. So why are you worried? Why? Then why are you worried if you believe? So if you if you worry, it's because you have not yet believed that God can do it. Hallelujah. Amen. I told us that this, this message is just a basic message. We are revisiting the foundation again. Because there's no point going higher when your foundation is faulty. Let's deal with the foundation. Establish it well. Then we can now build and then go up because we are going on a very far journey. Amen. Amen? Amen. There are heights to attain. There are glory to get. There are great things to happen that we need to get. But our faith must be intact. We must not allow the enemy shake us and then put us in bondage. Jesus set us free. He said, stand fast in the liberty. Oh my God, I love that scripture. Galatians 5 verse 1, 4 verse 1. He says, stand fast in the liberty that Christ has made us free and refuse to be entangled with the yoke of bondage. Refuse. Sickness is bondage. Refuse it. Hallelujah. Negativity is bonded. Refuse it. Speak the right word over your life. Yeah. I am blessed. Every day you should have what we call a speaking session. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Then you are, you know, you just decided, you just, I want to sound to say positive word over my life. Then you just take 30 minutes out and then every day you're just talking to yourself. I am blessed. And the head of God until. You can be pissing the floor by saying it. So when I see you and say you are going mad, everything's working out for me. I am blessed. I'm here and on the tail. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. I'm excellent. I'm wonderful. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Yes. You don't have a job. I, I know, but I'm blessed. Yes. Amen to Jesus. Amen. You don't have food to eat. I am blessed. I am. Glory to God. You just keep saying these things until it overtakes you. Because your confessions will bring your possessions. Amen. What you constantly affirm will be confirmed in your life. Amen? Amen. And like I said once again, spirits are not joking. If you say a negative word, they can hold your words against you. <laughs> oh, Jesus. They can hold your words against you. That's why those of you that have visited, you visited maybe um, uh, Azem some time ago. <laughs> or you visited one shrine somewhere. And then they tell you to say certain things. And then you said it casually. To you, you were saying it casually. The spirits are taking you seriously. And those words you say, they will hold it against you. So be careful what you say. Amen to Jesus. Amen. He said, as you have spoken in my ears, that's what I'll do to you. Amen to Jesus. Alright, building your faith now. Now, in Romans 8, uh, Romans 10, I'll do a round up now. Romans chapter 10, let's see from verse 8. Romans chapter 10 from verse 8. Hallelujah. Say, so, but what said it? The world is near thee. Even in where? Your heart. Your mouth. That is the word, and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. Go to verse 10. Verse 9. Go to verse 9. For with the heart, with the heart, what? Man believe. Go to what? Righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Verse 11. For the scripture said, whosoever believeth on him shall not be what? So you will not be ashamed if you believe in God. With your heart, man believe. What you say all the time, ladies and gentlemen, will become your reality. So I want to encourage the same faith-filled words all the time. Be positive. Amen? Amen. This is not mere, this is not motivational talk. This is scripture. Be what? Positive. Speak the word. The word of faith is in your heart and it's near you. Say, speak the word. Now finally, oh, praying in the Holy Ghost to 
build your faith, you need to pray in the what? So I wish I had a lot of time for this, but maybe next week we'll talk about this. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Jude chapter 1 and verse 20. Praying in the Holy Ghost. This is so powerful. We don't have enough time to go through this, but uh, next week, by God's grace. Praying in the for the scripture said, I'm uh, sorry, Jude 1 verse 20. Building up yourself upon your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Building up yourself upon your most holy faith, praying what? In the Holy Ghost. When you pray more in the Holy Ghost, you are building up your faith. Your most holy faith. Hallelujah. Oh my God. My God, my God, my God. Next week, next week. But you need to, ladies and gentlemen, if you are here this morning, you are still not yet baptized in the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you need to desire. Because you'll be cheating yourself of the inheritance that God has already made in store for you. There is so much that you can get. And I'm going to return us by next week as God enables us more about this because there's so much power inside of you potentially that needs to be generated. And it's inside of you. And the way we preach to access that power is praying in the Holy Ghost. All the time. Let your mouth be moving. Praise the Lord. Keep praying in the Spirit. You are stirring up that power that's within you. The Bible says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask for things, according to the power that worketh in us. There's a power inside of us, but that power needs to be activated. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That power needs to be stirred up. Yeah. Building up yourself upon the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Uh, finally, finally. To build up your faith, you must learn to speak to things. Speak to what? Things. Speak to what? Things. That means you speak to your situation. You speak to your body. You speak to your pocket. Hello. You speak to your house. You see how it sounds funny, right? But well, that's me. Yes. Look at what Jesus said in Luke 15. Luke 17, rather. This is Jesus. I'm quoting Jesus. Luke 17, verse 5. And Jesus said unto them, No, the disciples came to Jesus and said, Master, the apostle said unto him, Lord, increase what? How much you want your faith to increase? How much you want to increase your faith? Good. He said, Lord, increase. And then what did, what did Jesus say? And the Lord said, if you had faith as a grain of what? Mustard seed. You what? You might say unto this sycamore tree, be thou plucked up by the roots. And the what? And be planted in the sea, and it should what? Hello, somebody. You will see to the sacrament to be plucked up and be planted there, and it will obey you. Brother, there's power in your words. Life and death. So the more you speak to things and believe, you'll be seeing manifestation. Just keep speaking. I've told you this story before. So if you are not here, so let me share you the story again. Praise the Lord. For those who have had, had it before, I'm only just reminding you. If you've not had it before, then this is the story. Praise the Lord. <laughs> the woman was in church just like this, and she was hearing the pastor preach. And the pastor said, you can speak to mountains, and mountains will obey you. Uh -huh. Jesus said, speak to this mountain, and be cast into the sea. And all that, you will have what you say. Yeah. And then the woman went back home. At her backyard, there was a big mountain. <laughs> And this so-called mountain was preventing air, you know, free aeration into her, her compound. And then she went away the pastor, Pastor, is it true if I talk to a mountain, it will be me? The pastor said, this is what Jesus said. And Jesus is not lying. He said, Pastor, have you spoken to mountain before? <laughs> the pastor said, the word of God is true, you cannot lie. Okay, so I believe. She went back home. And then she went to her backyard and saw that mountainous thing. And then she pointed at it. She said, you mountain. Jesus said, if I speak to you, you will obey me. I speak to you now in the name of Jesus. Be removed. And be planted in the sea. 
In Jesus' name. Amen. And the man was still looking at her like this. <laughs> the mountain didn't move. But I believe. I don't know that there. And then she went home. The next day she came outside. The mountain, you are no longer there. You are already out. She kept saying that first month, nothing happened. Second month, nothing happened. Then the third month came, nothing happened. Fourth month, nothing happened. Finally, the fifth month, still nothing happened. But the sixth month came. <laughs> Something happened. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're told that those from the town planning ministry were making a road path along that line. And when they got to that thing that looked like a mountain, they said, and then they realized that this thing is connected to a particular compound. And then they're like, they need to remove this thing. They want to meet the woman. Excuse me, madam, are you the owner of this? Yeah, he said, yes. So there's this. Thing that is obstructing our construction, we want to take permission from you <laughs> to remove it. <laughs> and then she said, Carry on. <laughs> and then they brought dynamite and they stuck it into the wall under the mountain and then they blew the whole thing open and then they removed the thing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now the question is, has the mountain gone or not? Oh. How it will happen is not your business. Hello, somebody. How it will happen is not your business. Just say. And believe. And believe. It's like going to the switch and then you put on the light and the light comes on. How the light transfers from the switch to this is not your business. Just put on the switch. The problem is many of you are trying to reason it out. How will it happen? And that's where your headache is. God will not tell you how it will happen. Just believe. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Let us speak to your mountain. Yeah. Let's stand to our feet. Yeah. Lift your hand and appreciate the Lord.